Hello everyone! This video will introduce you to the basics of mobile apps market research using App Magic tools. We will go through them one by one and showcase how these tools can be useful for building your product strategy and scaling your business. Let's kick off with login. Our website does not require registration as such. All you need to do is click on login and choose one of the following ways to authorize. App Magic offers two major types of tools, top charts and dashboards. Looking ahead, we can say that using them jointly and consistently will let you discover many valuable insights. For starters, let's go to the top charts. Here we display rankings of top free apps, top grossing apps, as well as apps that get the highest level of support from platforms. By default, you see worldwide data covering all the 60 largest countries we process. If needed, specify the target macro region or country. This data is also aggregate for both Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Note that we treat iPhone and iPad as separate entities because they generally place titles differently in the respective charts. The most recent available date is the day before. By clicking on the corresponding selector, you can switch to weekly or monthly charts and select any particular day, week or month. These are the basic settings you may find in other similar services, but AppMagic offers several incredible features to fine-tune your research criteria. What makes our service stand out against competitors is that all more or less noteworthy apps in terms of their performance have a set of markers of genre, subgenre, setting, and art style. We call these markers tags. Simply use the selector to pick one or several tags from our extensive app classification. By the way, we have manually classified over 80,000 apps by now, and day by day, this number keeps growing. Say we want to look into arcade games, but this segment is really diverse, so let's focus on the idle clicker subgenre. Now, all top performing idle clicker games for October 2020 are in front of you. It is especially useful if you want to have all successful titles of the kind listed on a single page. So you do not need to serve the app stores for hours and worry that you're missing out on something important. The research will be there for you just in a second. Click on any app to see its full set of tags. For example, Tap Tap Heroes is classified as arcade and has two subgenres, Idle Clicker and Idle Battler. The game has a fantasy setting, and its visuals are described as 2D, with a normal level of detail and stylized. Let's say now we want to explore another subgenre, which is, in this case, Idle Battler. A click on this tag will take us straight to the top charts of apps of this type of tag. App Magic's another powerful feature is that you can pick up some apps at the same time and explore them in many contexts. To create the app comparison dashboard, simply click on the titles. As you see, now I am selecting all top grossing games. It is a good point to pick apps both at the top and at the bottom of rankings. That way, your research will cover titles that are successful right now as well as those that used to be market leaders but lost their positions. By the way, it's possible to pick up to 100 titles, so we invite you to get the most of this feature in order to have a more realistic picture of how the market composition has been changing. With the titles chosen, we can proceed to compare their metrics against one another or study their publishers. Now the graph displays the dynamics of monthly revenue for each app. But you can change it, of course, and choose the metric of your interest. We can also switch to weekly or daily values if we want to. If you haven't specified the store and the country in the previous step, you will see default aggregate data for both stores. Apple App Store 
and Google Play Store in all the countries we process. However, you can customize these settings right here. Use the bar to change the period for which the lines are displayed on the graph. In this case, we have reduced the observed time frame to 4 years. The table below shows total figures for different metrics for all the apps. By default, these figures are for lifetime. That is to say, from their very launch or from the 1st of January. Click here if you want to see figures for any other time period. If any metric catches your eye specifically, you can look into it for further insight. For instance, the revenue over downloads ratio is one of our signature metrics. We will interpret this metric in detail a bit later, so stay tuned. For now, let's consider that in some cases it is pretty close to the app's LTV and reflects the app's monetization ability. Then you can change the number of visible lines. There are two ways to do it. First, you can hide some lines by clicking on the I button. And vice versa, a double click will leave only one corresponding app on the graph. Another double click and all the other apps will return to the graph. Second, use the cog wheel to pick one of the following options for the number of visible lines on the graph. Now let's imagine the case when we need to explore the revenue dynamics of only five apps with the highest downloads. Naturally, we don't have to find them manually. There are three simple steps to reach our goal. We have a magic button called Show Top Lines. It plots lines on the graph for the very number of visible lines you've picked in the selector. Thus, our first step is to switch the number of visible lines to 5 since we need only 5 titles from the list. Then to see the performance of 5 top downloadable apps, Sort the table by clicking here. Yep, you can sort the table by any metric, which you see straight away. One click, and now the apps are ranked by their downloads. Finally, apply Show Top Lines. And we will end up with five lines on the graph that display revenue trends for the five apps with the highest downloads. You can also switch the type of graph from line to stacked area. It will provide a clear view of the level of competition in the niche, average life cycle, market leaders, and successful launches. Finally, after working with a top chart or a dashboard, you can always save them or download your results in a CSV file for further use outside the App Magic site. And now we have shown just one of the possible ways to use an app comparison dashboard. For your research. If any app is of particular interest for you, you can always learn more about it. Here we can see that Idle Miner Tycoon is available in 60 countries all over the globe for both Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Click on App Info for details. Here we have gameplay videos and screenshots, the app's official description, its release notes, and user rating. And there is even more to explore. Our system smartly picks similar apps that have the same genre and even the same setting or art style, so you can benchmark the chosen app with them in terms of main metrics. Here you can also find out how much featuring the app has been getting on any given day in any country. The R button pins all the app's new version releases on the graph. You can further analyze the correlation between changes in metrics and updates by switching to the app's release notes. To figure out the key market of the title, change the context of research. Create another app comparison dashboard to study its performance by platform or country. This dashboard for now will contain only this one app. Let's customize the graph settings by switching to monthly view and increasing the number of visible lines. And finally, choose the stacked area graph type for a great illustration of its market breakdown. 
Now let's see how the selectors can help to investigate the app's performance in different markets. For a country breakdown study, proceed to Geography and click on Select All Countries to create a new graph. Here we see that the title generates about 50% of its revenue in the United States. Now we're removing the country breakdown and leaving only the worldwide figures. Next, let's break the results down by stores. We're going to pick Google Play, iPhone App Store, and iPad App Store. The stacked area graph provides a super clear visualization too. And here is another exceptional thing that our service offers, and probably none other does. You can plot more than one metric on the graph at the same time. For example, we want to study revenue and download simultaneously. Now the app's metrics are displayed in the same color, but with different opacity. Cool, right? Here is an illustration of what challenges the comparison of several metrics can resolve. For example, this graph displays the downloads dynamics for three major poker games in the Russian market or the Google Play Store. What draws your attention straight away is how the installs skyrocketed for the game Texas Hold'em Poker, Pokerist, at some point. So now we want to figure out the reason for this traffic burst. Click on the app and create a dashboard for it, as we have done before. In Geography Selector, specify the country, which is Russia, and remove worldwide data. Then leave the Google Play Store for analysis. Then let's check if there is any correlation between the app's revenue and downloads at that time point. Look here. In July, downloads skyrocketed, yet the game's revenue does not reflect this spike at all. Some quick thinking suggests that there was a massive inflow of motivated traffic or of cheap traffic without any ROI optimization. Highly probable it was done to secure a better position in Google Play search results on specific keywords. We've covered all the main points about the app comparison dashboard, so now we can proceed to our next tool, which is Top Trending Chart. This unique tool displays apps with the highest rate of growth for the chosen time period, so it is indispensable to keep up to date on what apps are growing fast right now or to identify the most successful newcomers. Let's see the research criteria. Choose a tag that characterizes your target segment in the best way. Yes, the coolest thing here is that you can narrow your research down to a specific genre or subgenre. I will go in for idle clicker games. The default period of research is 3 months, but you can change it. You may also specify the country or the platform to be more precise. Tick the box New Only if you want to see apps that made it into the top 10,000 chart for the first time during the selected time frame. So here is a list of 12 new games that have been showing the fastest growth dynamics in the idle clicker segment within the last three months. The titles are ranked by their growth score. That is an abstract score which highlights apps that are the most notable in terms of growth. The first point is the app's global cross-platform position three months ago, and the second one its current position in the top charts. Next, we see that the title was installed over 4 million times within the selected time frame, and this game has been published even less than 3 months ago, but its install surged right after the launch. You can also check what apps have been losing positions within the market segment, but in this case, let's focus on successful titles. Now top free apps are displayed and you can switch to top grossing as well. Here you will probably see different apps with other revenue models. You can focus on the metric which you as a specialist are most interested in researching. Just like before you can select some apps and create a dashboard 
to compare the app's metrics on the timeline. This tool will save you time as it discovers the most trending apps in just a few seconds. So you don't need to serve stores looking for successful launches, which are already competing with market leaders. Then it's up to you to check these titles one by one carefully. Try to determine which product ideas brought these apps to the top charts so fast and use these ideas as an inspiration for your own products. We have the top LTV chart here too. Earlier, we have already mentioned our outstanding metric, the revenue over downloads ratio. The metric corresponds to the app LTV when the title is present in the market for an extended time period. Usually, if more than six months have passed since the app went worldwide, you can take this ratio as its LTV. In fact, in most cases, the revenue over downloads ratio represents about 90-95% to of the real LTV. Now you can see absolutely massive LTV figures here. This metric can also shed some light on the app's monetization model. In cases when the ratio is high, no prizes to guess that the title relies on in-app purchases, but its low values usually point to ad revenue model or hybrid model. In these cases, we display low figures because we can't estimate ad revenue accurately enough. The top LTV chart is explicitly useful in practical terms. Say, if you're looking for a publisher that knows how to monetize its products very well, or for an idea of your future product that won't be too expensive in development, but still will have a great potential for user monetization. Let's look closer to the arcade genre by using Tag Selector. It is quite popular genre, and in most cases, arcade games are relatively cheap in development. Let's also narrow things down to the United States. There is no point in analyzing worldwide LTV, as it is highly dependent on the traffic source. Thus, we have ended with a list of arcade games having the highest LTV in the US. Right at the top there is Trailer Park Boys, a pretty basic idle clicker game based on the eponymous franchise. It is pretty simple to produce, yet it makes 9.5 US dollars per user, and it is superb performance for a game of this genre. The following titles on the list also may provide you with valuable insight, so do not ignore them either. Now let's go to one of our most exciting tools, the similarity graph. It is of great help when a market segment you want to explore is too narrow or too vague to apply a specific tag. So conducting research of a small market segment seems to be a pain in the neck. But the similarity graph allows users to carry out niche research, discover competitors and preferences of the target audience just for one reference app. Similarity graph is a tool that allows one to visualize the likeness of apps. That is to say, similarity of gameplay, if it's a game, and audiences of the apps. To do so, we analyze recommendation systems of Apple App Store and Google Play Store and check the links between apps, in other words, how apps refer to each other. Then we visualize the connectivity graph and the list of the apps that are the most similar to the specified one. Let's see the similarity graph in action. Type the name of the reference app, for instance, Magic Piano by Smuel. Now we're looking at the graph of apps that the store is considered to be relevant to Magic Piano. Nodes represent the apps. You can adjust the number of the most relevant titles here. The node size stands for the number of app downloads for the last 30 days. The more downloads, the larger the node. And the opacity stands for the similarity to the reference app. So the less transparent the node, the more the similarity that exists between the two apps. Links connecting the nodes can tell a lot about the preferences of your target audience. These lines reflect cross-references of apps and their recommended blocks of the mobile stores. So if there is an area with lots of the links, you can interpret it as the fact that the audience circulates extensively among these apps. It's very likely that many users play more than one game from this pool. Thus, we can study these apps one by one to understand the audience better. 
you can check the similarity score by moving the mouse over the node. It is also displayed in the table below. Click on Details to see how the score was calculated. For example, Piano Plus by Ruby Cell is in the second position of the recommendations block for Magic Piano by Smule. Online Pianist was the sixth for Magic Piano, and Piano Plus was the first for Online Pianist, and so on. To complete the research, let's pick all the apps that we as professionals confirm to be direct competitors to Magic Piano, then create an app comparison dashboard. After that, switch to a stacked area graph type to have a clearer view of the niche breakdown. This dashboard will give you valuable insights into the characteristics of the market segment we have tailored for a specific app. Analyze whether the niche demonstrates vibrant dynamics and diversity, whether there are players with outstanding performance, and whether new titles enter the market segment regularly, take a significant market share, and manage to compete with leaders. Ask yourself a question if the niche looks friendly towards newcomers. To give you a simple example, we will showcase a similar dashboard for Match 3 games. Have a look! New top performing titles are the exception rather than the rule. The market segment is highly monopolized. 75% of the total market revenue is generated just by 5 top apps, which are run by two publishers, King and Playrex. For comparison, the idle games market looks totally different. It is diverse and vivid, with lots of new well-performing titles. It's high time to introduce the App Tracker. The toolset automatically keeps you up to date about the market changes you personally are interested in. With the Performance Tracker, you can configure notifications informing you about certain events in any market segment. For example, we want to track the metrics of Genshin Impact, so we are setting a notification to let us know as soon as the title gets over 200,000 daily installs worldwide across all the stores. And the Performance Tracker will send you a notification straight to your Slack or email as soon as it happens. For those who want to be notified as soon as any new app that matches the specified criteria appears on the market, we've got the app radar. In this case, we've set a notification on any soccer manager game that appears in the stores. Last but not least, before you actually start using App Magic, a few words must be said about the accuracy of our estimations. If we pick some not so successful app, we may see weird symbols next to the metrics values. When the symbol is black, it means that our estimates are rather approximate, and a red symbol like in this case indicates that the estimation error may be significant. A click on the symbol will take you to the article on the essentials of using app magic. Here you will find an explanation of the accuracy variation. In short, in most cases the average discrepancy doesn't exceed 10%. But when it comes in very low figures, the dispersion in possible values of revenue and downloads can be greater than the values themselves. In practical terms, it means that you should take metrics estimates of low-performing apps, that is to say apps that make less than 30,000 downloads or 30,000 US dollars revenue per month with a solid grain of salt. And we do recommend you keep in mind that the estimates of titles generating less than 10,000 US dollars revenue or 10,000 downloads per month are hardly reliable. So we have covered some of the unique opportunities App Magic offers to enhance your market expertise. You can always learn more about our unique tools by clicking on the hints. This one will take you to the article on how we estimate the featuring score. In our blog posts, you will find detailed descriptions of all of our features. Do not ignore the tips of the day, which are easily accessible right here. They briefly cover the basics of App Magic and contain a lot of useful information for refreshing how to use our tools. Whenever you have any questions, you can always hit us up at info at appmagic.rocks. 
There is also a chatbot and an online form for quick questions, which help meet your professional needs in real-time mode. Thank you for your attention!